The signal was coded and sent at 0210, mean standard. Saturday, October 5 of last year. It was received and logged at 0318 that same day. And the signal was logged as? I'm sorry? The priority rating of the signal? Priority EM13. That was the flash report. The incident report was subrated. Medical request EM15. Rated 1 3, 1 5. So this was urgent. Yes. And when the officer of the day brought you the message. I ordered us offline at 0336 and memoed Biochem. They had about half the stuff, the medication on board, and could synthesize the rest by the time we reached our launch window. And would you tell us? exactly the nature of the medication. Altonine, a recombinant viral vaccine. They needed 63 units and a load of antibiotics to help hold down the fungal growth. Fungus? There were fungus problems on LC-10? Yes. Fungus problems similar to those experienced three years ago in the J-Group mining system? Yes. And would you like to remind us of the outcome of that epidemic? Many men died. Where are you taking me? Uh, Deck six is impassable at the center line. Too much condensation again. This is the wrong way. It's a shortcut. We'll cut through D-Hold. D-Hold? D-Hold's full of tourists. No, it's not. Not anymore. They moved 900 head out of there this morning because of the condensation. D-Hold's going to be completely empty. Empty. That's good, Mitch. Great. Great idea. It was going to be empty. Excuse us. Oh. Now look at this. They're shunning water again. Tell me, why can't they just blow it in outer space? They gotta recycle it. Oh, yeah, hey, they gotta recycle it so they can give it back to these people to drink and relieve themselves of it all over again. Yeah, well, better them than me. Do you ever drink push water? Of course not. I work for a living. <laughs> oh, look at this. Hello, excuse us. Let's, let's go the other way. Let's go back. No, no, no. My, my drop's in half an hour. That gives you plenty of time to change your mind. Mitch, it's not a voluntary drop, okay? Regulation section 79, sub 3. All emergency missions considered mandatory at the discretion of the captain. I know, I know. So develop some sun disability. I'm going. Hey, you know where you're going? You're going to LC-10 mining colony. You know what? It's frozen hell there. <laughs> There's no reliefs here for eight months. You're going to sit around with nothing to do. One word, Mitch. Captain's orders. You know what, John? You're a lemon. A lemon. That is what you are, John. You're no lieutenant. I know lieutenant. Excuse me. We're having a private conversation here? Yeah. I think we need a little revolution around here, you know? I mean, why do we always have to go right where they point? Mitch, it's a rescue mission. It's high profile. When I get back, I'm getting a promotion. You can count on it. I'm going to outrank you. If the captain hadn't given me this, I'd have begged him. Uh-huh. Well, I think begging's against regulation. Only if you growl. <laughs> At 0343, I logged in orders to the navigational officer and sent a maintenance crew down to the flight deck, instructed my flight commander to send an EDS. An EDS is a... Emergency dispatch ship. They're lightweight one-way vehicles. Disposable. Computer does most of the flying. My ship carries 10 of them. I sent a yeoman down to tell a pilot to pick up his orders. And he was? The pilot? Yes, sir. Barton. John Barton. Skip loader pilot. Second lieutenant. Good pilot? I thought so. Barton transferred to the Saratoga two and a half years ago. File says he owned some options, was part of our profit-sharing plan. Did he want this mission? Yes, definitely. Why? I think because it would look good on a resume, would weigh in heavily at promotion time. And until the time in question, you considered Barton a good officer. Absolutely. Why? Because he followed orders. Oh, I can't believe they make people live in here. It's the price they pay to get where they're going. You know, the company's got to pay for better ventilation. They're always asking to stop breathing. What door do we need? Well, we went all the way down there. Come on, we got to change your clothes. 
These are brand new boots. Oh. I calculated fuel consumption on your regular weight and... Whoa. What have you been eating? Soy meal, same as you. And you're one to talk. Yeah, well, I'm not the one who has to fly the kite. I know you pretty well. Unbelievable. Mitch, it's my reader. It's two pounds. It's regulation. What do you think? They give you this paper flight suit because it makes you look good? You were probably sick that day at flight school, but there's this whole thing about, you know, enough fuel to get to the planet, no excess weight. Gardner! Take this to my quarters. What am I supposed to read down there for eight months? I don't know. You want it to gig? Suffer. I want that thing back. No, I'm not gonna get it back. When did you learn how to read anyway? Much better, see? Okay. The coordinates are set, and you got 17 minutes to jump out. So take care of yourself. <laughs> I want it back. Oh, yeah? Eight months. Dream about me. EDS 34G11, I need a confirm on this test. Well, that goes for it, EDS. You are clean and green for item one, so check it down. Okay, I have inertial guidance. Right. I have a primary computer. Right. I have backup computer, and I'm enslaving ignition sequence. No. Okay, that goes forward. We're taking our feet from the bridge. Seconds to jump out, so I'm gonna swing out your item two, that is item beta, and I'm gonna give you a mark at seven. Six, five, auto ignition engage. I turn on your pretty lights, and don't forget to write. See the numbers, Mitch. John, hold on. Um, John, switch your computer over to Auto IGS. All right, that's better. I have pitch stabilized at 9.3 mark 4 percent. Uh, what was that, Mitch? I have no idea. Somebody must have sneezed on your guidance now. Should I reset? No, no, you're fine. We're tracking you good. You didn't burn up any fuel. I'm very sorry for your tummy. Forward that. I'm gonna run a diagnostic. Big Sarah, you copy? Yeah, come back, John. I got a funny here. A telemetry error, comp alert ID 319er. That's impossible. What does it mean? It means you're too heavy, but I checked that payload myself. Hey, maybe you got a lurky. You know, uh, Prep could have left a, a vacuum cleaner or something on board. You think? This flight crew, yeah, I think. Uh, why don't you go find it and boot it and uh, get back to me, okay?
Okay. Okay. You got me. Hi. Come out of there. What? Get out! Get out! All right! All right. You're not gonna arrest me, are you? I mean, I'm willing to pay the fine or whatever. What are you, what are you doing here? Well, I guess it's obvious. I'm catching a ride. You can't. Well, whatever. We're gonna have to make the best of it. Saratoga, I have a problem. Yeah, John, come back. My name's Lee. I have a situation. What kind of situation? Is it gonna be a long trip? A uh, stowaway. What did you say? I have a stowaway. She's a colonist, a girl. Uh, I don't know how she... Mitch, what do I do? I have no idea. I think you ought to get a flash report upstairs. I'm burning fuel out here. Yeah, yeah, that, that goes for Yeah. Yes, sir? Uh, let me bridge Comstat. Hey, never mind, I'm gonna go do it myself. So what are you gonna do? Ask for help. <laughs> don't be stupid, they're not gonna help. You're, uh, kinda stuck with me. Stupid? I'm stupid, you have no idea what's happening. Yes, I do. I'm here and it's against the rules. And don't be such a pain, I said I'd pay the fine. There is no fine, it's more serious than that. Look, I'm not scared of you. You think I care about your orders? I'm NC, cargo. Nothing is worse than that. What are you doing here? You're kidding, right? I mean, I saw you on the ship, so I know you saw where I had to live. Do I need more of a reason to get out of there? Yeah, you do. I'm going to LC-10. It's a mining colony, worst pit on the frontier. Nobody wants to go. Yeah? Well, I do. Why? My brother's there. I gotta see him. Well, prepare to be disappointed. We're not going. Wait, what do you mean, not going? Just what I said. This ship can't go to LC-10 with you on board. What, they won't let us land? No, we can't land. Your weight wasn't figured in when we were launched. If we try to land, we'll run out of fuel and burn up in the atmosphere. I am not going back. You can't go back. We don't have the fuel. It's what we call a fundamental design constraint. We could die out here. Well, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna ask for help. EDS 34 G11. Wait. It's me. Hey, buddy, listen, we got us a situation here. You know, a firestorm of proper channels. Every suit in the ship is standing in a circle calculating trajectory, fuel, time loss. Well, Mitch, get him out of this conference mode, okay? This thing only gets worse by the minute. Buddy, you don't have to tell me. Listen, the captain's gonna come down here and talk to himself. He is? Yeah. Um, give me the girl's name and ID number. Hey, let go! 85227, oh. Zulu Zulu Tango, Marilyn Lee Cross. My name is Lee. All right. All right, sit tight. I'll call you when the captain gets here. Over. So why are they keeping us hanging out here? I mean, what's there to discuss? Protocol, proper channel. You said we could die out here. Yeah. Well, call him back. Tell him to get with it. Hey, there's procedure, okay? You've spent your life on Earth. You wouldn't know, but out here a misstep can get somebody killed. Yeah, and that's us if they don't hurry up. Look, dropping a freighter back into black space is a big deal. You have to take an engine offline. It's dangerous. Well, I am really, really sorry. But let's get on with it, okay? Because it's not like they got a choice. It's expensive. <laughs> EDS, John. Hey, uh, buddy, I'm gonna put the captain on... Listen, we've got to do this formally. I'm sorry. That's okay. What? What's he saying? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm spooling the disc. Lieutenant Barton, do you consent to this recording as an official transcription of orders issued pursuant to Corporate Regulation Section 481, Subsection 1, Beta? Yes, I do. John, we received your distress call at 0703. Is that when you first noticed your passenger? Uh, approximately one minute before that. Okay, at 0702, that's when you notice the passenger. Mitch, I, I recommend we cut through the papers here. I I'm burning gas out here. Don't hurry up. John, everyone's aware of the situation up here, all right? I, I just need to calm down, don't make any waves. What does that mean? Let me, let me, just, let me just put the captain on. Lieutenant Barton, I want to say for the record, I feel very badly about all this. We've made every effort to salvage your situation. Thank you, sir. I've consulted the engineers, the flight director, and the board of representatives, but I'm afraid there are no options. Yes, sir. Your orders are to make the necessary adjustments and complete your drop. Complete my drop, sir? How? You are to normalize your weight differential. I don't understand. What don't you understand? How can I complete my drop, sir? Listen, son. It's a bad situation all the way around. But I can't change the laws of physics. You're going to have to put the girl off. She 
you're still alive, sir. I'm, I'm not sure that was clear. I know that, yes, I'm sorry. But there are no practicable options. We have solid legal precedent. You will not be liable. But, sir, in, in this extreme situation, couldn't you come back for us, sir? That's not an option. I have a schedule to maintain. The girl brought this on herself. It's a bad situation. I understand that. But, sir, maybe there's another ship in the vicinity. Or... No, it's the first thing we checked. Don't you think we checked? Now, listen, Barton, I've issued you your orders. I feel very badly. We all do. But you are to correct the anomaly by 0724. Reserve fuel will be sufficient if you are within the weight envelope by that time. You have 11 minutes, son. Do you understand and agree to follow the orders with which you have been charged? Barton? Lieutenant Barton? Yes, I do. Confirmed. Logged 0713, 5 October. South? When's the company coming to get us? Said I have to put the girl off. What? Put me off? Yeah. So I'm supposed to float out there in some kind of suit, right? I mean, and, and, and until someone comes and picks me up. There is no suit. No, no, wait, you wait. If you make me leave the ship, I'll die. I know. So, so, so you're saying you're, you're just gonna put me off the ship with no suit? Like this? Naked? You're, you're, you're just gonna toss me away? It's not like that. They'd come back for us if they could. There's just no choice. Oh my god. You want to do it? I don't. Look at what you're doing. You did this to yourself. This is why the flight deck is restricted, why NC isn't allowed, why there are signs. Keep out. All I did was go somewhere I wasn't supposed to. I didn't hurt anybody. Look, try not to think about it. Let's just... What are you doing? Don't make this hard. I'm trying to get the execution over with as soon as possible? It's not my decision. No, but you're gonna carry it out, right? I have to. Do you really think I'm just gonna walk off? Huh? You're, you're acting like there is nothing out there. Like I'm going out the door to grandma's. But there is nothing out there. No light, no air. You can't pretend that- I still don't understand. No, I understand. But I don't accept it. They say this, you say that, and I'm supposed to smile and say, oh, I see, sorry for the inconvenience. Well, I don't see. And I'm not gonna let you kill me, because that's what it is. You're standing there hoping to murder me. There's nothing I can do. No, 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 no. you listen to me. I am not worthless, and I'm not going in there. So you're gonna have to kill me first or drag me kicking and screaming because I'm not going in there. Saratoga, this is EDS 34G11. Hey, John, how you doing? Mitch, look, I want you to give me access. Some bad business out there, buddy, but don't worry about it. Nobody up here blames you. It's not your fault. Just put it behind you, make your drop. Mitch, I want you to give me access to your guidance computer. What for? I want to calculate my reserve, cut back on my deceleration burn for as long as I can. Clear the deck. You didn't do it yet, did you? Look, I'm going to... It's gonna get done. John, that was a direct order they gave you. You gotta do it. They're gonna think that you're disobeying the order. Mitch, okay? I, I, I just need time. We have to do what they tell us to do. I feel bad for this girl. I do. I feel bad for You're not the one out here looking at her. No, and I'm not gonna pay the price. Now, they will cut us both down because of this. I just want to recalculate my entry vector. The captain gave you a direct order. I, what are you thinking? You cannot override your guidance program without authorization. You know that. Just log me onto the Sarah's computer, will you? No. I'm not asking you to break any rules. No, you are asking me to help you break the rules. It's the same thing. I can do it on my own box. The onboard computer is not configured to do then that. Then give me the access. I will not. Fine, I'm reconfiguring. John, don't do that. What do you think about this? They're going to tag you with this for life. John. John. What are you going to do? 
try to help you. Disable the safeties. Well, is that bad? Considering the safeties make sure we can't crash, yeah. What, 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 what did you do? I'm, I'm, I'm lighter. Am I lighter? I cut back the engines. It should give you a little time. I think I'm gonna be sick. Toilet's that way. Take a left. Okay. I'm gonna use up the reserve fuel. I'm gonna run the engines on low while you're on board, save gas, run them up to the top just before I land. I should give you a little time, not much. 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Best I can do, that's it. 40 minutes? What is that? I thought you were gonna help me. There's only so much I can do. We're outside the weight envelope. I've done the math. I can't make the lines come together. Yeah, and I'm NC. Hardly worth saving. I mean, why even try, right? I have tried. But I have orders, and I bent them too far already. I told you already, I don't care about your orders. Would you go if they told you? Hmm? Would you salute them and thank them for a wonderful career and just walk right off? This isn't about me. You hate us same as everybody else. I don't like you. As a group, you mill around with no ambition to get up out of your own filth? But that's not the point. I'm on a medical supply mission. What about the people on the planet? They need this drop. You do not know what it is like to be out of options. We're not so different. I couldn't always see I had anywhere to go. Don't you ever compare me to you. I am not gonna let you do it. I am not gonna let you push me off. Then we both die. So that's it, hmm? You've resigned yourself to murdering me. I would do something if I could. Would you? Yes. Then you think. You think. Something. Anything. Trying to recut our course, figure out a better route, maybe save enough fuel. So, to... what's it telling you? Not much. This computer's not designed to plot guidance. Well, well is that good? No, it's not. This is not gonna work. Let me try something else. Uh... Maybe it'll tell us how overweighted we are. Okay, that's you. I have to put in your weight. Did you ever do algebra? Yeah. Okay, well, you're X. All right, ship runs out of fuel here, accelerates towards the planet, hits the surface here. No good. Okay, that's it. Looks like we're 4631 grams too heavy, about 101 pounds. Well, that's less than I weigh. 
It's because I'm using the reserve. And if I weighed less still, say, say, say 50 pounds, I could stay longer, right? Well, yeah. But I can't weigh less. At least not significantly less. No, you don't have So to. there has to be something else on the ship that we can dump to lighten it besides me. There is nothing. This ship is mainly spun plastic. They build them cheap, recycle the controls, the airlock, leave the rest wherever it lands. It's disposable. One trip. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's your cargo? So what is it? Medical supplies. How do you know? I was told. Yeah? Well, let's find out. Don't touch it. Things got away as much as me. Easy. No. What? You can't move it? I can't dump it. Why? What is it? I don't know. It's so important I have to die and you don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. I think it does. I think if it's not important, we can dump it and they can send more. You don't know that. They don't send an EDS when people have the flu. They send them when people are going to die. Whatever it is, it's needed. End of story. Yeah? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Get back. Stop. Let go. Guys, stop it. All right, all right. Stop it. You stay there. I'll look. Okay, it's J fever. I knew a guy who worked in the J mines. He died of it. You hear me? It's fatal. <laughs> Stop, please. I'm not gonna stop. No, don't. Get up. I'll help you. Okay? If we find anything else, we can toss it out. But we can't touch the medicine. This isn't gonna work. I want you to understand that. There's no way I can take 100 pounds out of here. <laughs> hey! You're just trying to shut me up. Keep me quiet till it's time, till you can get a drop on me. What is it with you? I'm doing the best I can. I, I want to be sure you're gonna try. What do you want me to do? Well, we can find something heavy. Whatever possessed you to get on this ship in the first place. You ever try living for five months in a septic tank with 600 other people, eating next to them, breathing next to them, sleeping next to them, watching them get sick, have babies fall apart and die? There's no better down there. Well, maybe not, but I won't be alone. You weren't alone on the Saratoga, so that's not why you stowed away. I told you why. I wanted to see my brother, Adrian. I was living in that cesspool, and miracle of miracles, you were taking a ship and you were going my way. I just figured I'd come along for the ride. How did you get on board? Saratoga's an old ship, infested. You got NC like rats, and crawlways you've never seen, ducts, ventilation shafts, they never leave the ship. So you found a shaft, you crawled through and stowed away. Uh -huh. All this just to see your brother? pick something less dangerous. Because I couldn't? That means it's not like I knew this had happened. Hey, what was that? Why is our stuff hitting the door on the way out?
So how much did we lose? About 35 pounds. How much time? Looks like 57, 50. Looks like they gave us a little less than an hour. Okay, so every 40 pounds is an hour. Looks like. Well, we get two more loads like that and we're there. Listen. What? The sound, you don't hear it? Well, sure I hear it. You don't have to put your ear up to no, the... No, no, not that sound. There's another one. In the background. Like whispering. Like a pulse. Almost as though it were a living thing. Living? Yeah. But it's different now. Different after you changed the engines, different after we threw the stuff out. But somehow it's still the same. Like a person, yelling, whispering. A little out of breath, maybe, but still with a distinct voice. Come here. Listen. No, thanks. Come on. I mean, you don't know I'm wrong unless you try. Come here. Put your ear right up against it. Nothing. Haven't you ever thought that objects respond to you? You know, just a little. Keep listening. Let it happen. Stop thinking. Obviously, I already have. Hey, what is that? What is what? The wall. What are the walls lined with? Insulation. It's a polymer. It's light. Even if we took it off, it wouldn't weigh enough. You know that for sure? If we took the insulation out of the whole ship, it wouldn't weigh 10 pounds. So just stand there and watch. You said you were going to help me, and all you do is argue. You want me to die? I can accept that. I don't want you to die. Have you ever thought about it? About what it's like to kill another human being? No. You know, you could have put me out when you talked to your captain. I thought maybe if you had some time, you might... accept things. I thought this mission would get me a promotion. <laughs> Why would you think that? Oh, you know, straight and narrow, service above and beyond, that sort of thing. Story of your life, isn't it? Not my whole life. When I was 15, I hopped a shuttle to Mars. <laughs> really? You stowed away? I hid in a shipment of beer. 
find me for a week. Well, what happened? They sent me home on the next ship. My parents paid a huge fine, my father. And my father said I was on my own after that. He figured he'd done his bit, paid all the bills he was gonna. He said having a kid didn't mean he had to pay the freight forever. I learned to respect regulations. You know, my whole life, I've, I've done everything wrong. But this is the first time I ever really got myself in trouble. Are you scared? No. Not anymore. I mean, I know I'm scared. But I don't feel scared. I guess it's the nature of the human mind. Denial, you know? I mean, I think if I really thought I was gonna die, I'd just pee all over my feet. <laughs> you know, my brother used to tell me, every choice you make is the right one, no matter what. Every door you open has possibilities. Every crisis is an opportunity. You can't take any wrong turns in life. I wonder what he'd say about this. No. No. I've seen you. I've seen you all. You do the quartermaster for a blanket. You do the mess chief for extra rations. I never did that. I never let anybody touch me. Guys I work with, they go down to the cargo decks. They do things. Not me. I didn't do this because I want anything from you. You think you're going to get me to toss my cargo and my career aside for that? No. No. You smug son of a bitch. You think you know everything, don't you? I don't want anything from you. I'd rather go out the damn door. This is it. That's absolutely all there is. So you can't say that I didn't, uh, uh... You too. Well, it's almost 60. It's just over 50, not even a half. Well, you didn't think we'd get this far. We just gotta keep going. See, I'm good at making things work. Now, the next you thing we should do... You still don't understand, do you? Oh. You don't understand. There is nothing left. Look, look. We've got less than an hour, and there is nothing left to throw out. Why do you keep doing this? A, a really funny story. You want to hear it? <laughs> I guess. Okay. So, the Pope is on a state trip, right? And his chauffeur is driving him. And the Pope leans forward to the chauffeur and he says, Do you mind if I drive? And the chauffeur says, No, because it's the Pope. So he, uh, <laughs> the, the, the chauffeur lets the Pope drive and, and he's, he's taken corners on two wheels and flying through stop signs and sure enough he gets pulled over by a cop and he says did I do something wrong officer and uh, <laughs> the cop says uh, excuse me your your eminence I mean it's the Pope right so the cop freaks so he goes back to the dispatcher and he says 
what do I do? I just pulled over someone really important. And the dispatcher says, well, how important? And he says, well, you know, important, important. And, and the dispatcher says, well, is it the mayor? And he goes, no, more important than that. And the dispatcher says, well, is it the governor? And he says, no, more important than that. And he goes, well, well, well who is it? And, and, and the cop says. I'm not exactly sure, but the pope is his driver. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it. <laughs> John, John, wait, 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 John, no, no. No, I need to talk to my brother. You gotta let me call my brother. You gotta, you gotta let me call my brother. You gotta let me call my brother. You a word you say. Get out. Get out! Could you help me? Yeah. Sit there. I'll stand. Sit. Ground Station LC-10, this is Echo Delta Sierra, 34G11, do you copy? <laughs> That goes forward. Uh, ground station, can you boost your Signal is weak. You're going to have to wait a minute to completely in What happened? Sit down. Sit. What happened? We're not completely in range yet. Well, well, will I be able to talk to him? You just wait a second. Okay, try it now. Just wait. Okay, now. What's his name? Did you tell me his name? Adrian. EDS 34G11, hailing ground station LC10. Do you copy? We got you, EDS. Uh, ground station, I need to talk to an Adrian Cross. Satellite tracking shows you off course by vector heading 34 mark 8. Please, can you get me Adrian Cross? Oh, sure. You know, he's out by the pool having a drink. Do you want me to send a bellboy? It's an emergency. All right, all right, just a second. Okay, cross, cross. Oh, he's out surveying with a team near the Sea of Despair. It's not on my chart. 
It's the single advantage of this job. We get to name things. Look, tell him to get to any transmit point and call me ASAP. That goes forward, but I don't know if he's gonna make it back in time. Sun's setting and we're gonna be calm dark in a while. Well, it's an emergency, so get somebody on it. Yeah, they're doing it. Now, we've got your new drop window in about three hours, but you're gonna overshoot the pad. It's gonna take us a day to get to you. Yeah, I've had guidance problems. I had to scrub my original IG program. Listen, how long can you hold out? Oh, we're okay. If you're having problems, we can delay. Do you wanna wait? No, I can't do that. I'll call you later with drop numbers, but I need to talk to Cross. We'll be in contact. Over. So what, they can't transmit after sunset? It's the rotation of the planet. The base goes over the rise and we can't hear them, they can't hear us. Uh, it's almost dark in their area, looks like about two hours. So I wouldn't worry about it, it's more time than you have. Nice. Can't we just, um... No, we can't. And don't ask me for anything else, I'm not gonna help you. So what am I supposed to do? You wait, quietly, until he calls. And whether he calls or not, at 9.25, it's good night, Irene. Charming. You're welcome. just sit there waiting, you know, it's like I have this clock ticking in my head. I don't want to talk. I have nothing to say to you. You tried to kill me. Well, now you know how it feels. I'm sorry. I mean, I know you don't care, but I am. Fine. I never tried to kill anybody before. Me neither. I guess it's sort of funny if you think about it. You think that was funny? Well... It was original. I mean, my whole life I've made the same mistakes over and over. You know, I just repeat them. A lot of people do. My mom, she just got married. She just got married for the fourth time. This guy, Russell. My dad's been married twice. The minute I saw him, I knew she was gonna marry him. How'd you know that? His eyes. Her first husband she really loved. He died before I was born, but his eyes, they were, uh, they were pink. Pink? Yeah. Well, not the pupils. They were brown, but the white around it was pink. Bright pink. Bloodshot, like all the time. And then later, all her husbands had the same pink eyes, same big clumsy bones. It was kind of scary. Why? Truthfully, made me think I was fated from birth to marry a pink-eyed man. Because you know what? I'm just like my mom. We're the same as two squirrels. Every time I think of her sleeping next to that awful man, I just want to scream, you know? trying to get to know me, so I feel bad when I have Do to... Do you want to feel good about it? No. <laughs> so, go ahead. Well, I don't know what to say. Anything. Is there very much in your life you regret? What, you mean like getting on this ship? No. I mean, like things you did, and you knew what you were doing when you did them, and you knew why, and you thought you were right, but later you wish you hadn't done them. Maybe because you, you learned something, or just because you find you think differently later on. I wish I'd taken better care of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have eight feelings. Eight feelings. I hate my smile. When I lived in Cincinnati, I... I found a wallet on the street once. It had ID and everything inside it. Belonged to a fellow who lived in my building. I saw him in the elevator almost every day. Almost every day I saw him in the elevator. But I kept the wallet. No, I threw the wallet away. I kept the money. It was only $71. So what happened? Well, I felt sorry. So what did you do? I started using the stairs. Passing through gases from the edge of the LC system. Kind of like a solar wind. The static from the ship makes it glow. It's pretty. You know, up until now, my whole life has been getting ready to live. I always said to myself, after I do this, that's when I'll start to live. A lot of people think that way. I know I do. But you can't divide things in half forever, can you? I mean, how many people can say they're alive right now? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. I've seen pictures of people who died in space. What happens to a person's body? Your lungs will decompress. The oxygen will want to go out to fill the vacuum. The absence of pressure will cause your blood to uh, sort of boil, and the cold will freeze it solid at the same time. It won't last longer than a split second. I don't think it will be painful. Promise me something. When I go out there, don't look through that window. Don't look at me no matter what. What was that? Nothing. We've used up the oxygen in the first tank. It's just shunting over to the... Lieutenant, at this point, had Barton tried to contact the Saratoga to get approval for any of this? The stripping of the insulation, the jettisoning of various parts of the ship? No, he hadn't. What was the next piece of information you received? The EDS was still feeding us drop numbers. Uh, Lieutenant Barton had, had disconnected his own communication, but there was an automatic feed linked to the flight recorder in Big Sarah, which is a computer on our ship. It displays thrust numbers, bearing, fuel consumption, stuff like that. Uh, at 0916, we received the comp alert that there was a, an oxygen system malfunction on the EDS. And was this, in fact, the case? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we found out later Barton himself made this system malfunction. Why would he do that? He was attempting to jettison an O2 tank. Uh, he needed a pressurize to remove it from the ship, but the computer will not release a pressurized tank, so he had to uh, yeah, hot wire it. Mm -hmm. And uh, how would he do that? Well, sir, I have no idea. I imagine that he would have looked at the electrical schematic in his computer. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, why do you think Barton failed to contact the Saratoga? He must have needed help. Technical advice? He was insulating himself. Perhaps he was uh, trying to minimize his infractions. Well, had you threatened him? 
pushed him away, led him to believe he was on his own? No, I was working with him. So, you're telling us you were cooperating? No. Helping him break regulations? No, sir. You have to understand, at this point, Barton and I, we were friends. I didn't want to see him throw away his career. I was guiding him. I was helping him. I was trying to get him to follow his standing order. I see. <clears throat> Let's get back to the malfunction. How would jettisoning an O2 tank help Barton? Just like everything else he was doing. It would buy him some time. There should be a gray junction box. Do you see it? No. Should be eight wires, uh, black in the center. Okay, I got it. All right, we're gonna have to cross-connect that circuit. Can you reach it? Nope. Well, you have to. Well, give me a boost. What's wrong? Oh, I got shocked. Well, be careful. There are live terminals up there. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> Damn! I said be careful. Shut up. I am being careful. <sighs> okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, good. Now, one of the input wires is red. Do you see it? Yeah. It's connected in two spots? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Good. You have to pull that out and hook it in with the yellow and the orange. Okay. Okay, wait. Hold on. Let me get to the screen. All right, I have to vent the tank. Then you bypass the sensor, all right? It has to be draining when we release it or it's not going anywhere. I'll tell you when. Okay, the tank is about 200 PSI, takes maybe 15 seconds for it to drain. That means you have less than that to rig the thing. So be ready with that wire. I'm ready. What do you think I'm going to do? Drop it? Okay, do it now. Didn't work. What's wrong? What's wrong? Just a second. Hurry up. The pressure's dropping. We gotta make the computer think it's zero before it is zero. Hurry up. Come on. Come on, come on. We're losing it. Come on, if we don't drop it now, it's never gonna get dropped. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please, come on. That's 15 pounds. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, God! Would you get me the hell out of here? Okay, you get your choice. Uh, beef and broccoli, macaroni and cheese, uh, or meatloaf. I'm not hungry. Well, give it a try. Well, I'm a vegetarian. Macaroni and cheese it is. I'm not eating it. Look, I'm hungry and I don't want to eat alone, so just try it, will you? It heats up. Yeah, you're supposed to mix it with water first, but we we dumped the water, so. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Lovely. <laughs> mm. It's good. You didn't say it was good. Well, the food they give you on the Saratoga must have been awful. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. Hey, how much does this weigh? Less than a pound. Eat up. It's getting cold in here. No insulation. Don't worry, though. It'll heat up plenty when we enter the atmosphere. Can you, uh... C can you turn the heat up?
Well, it's on. Well, it doesn't feel like it. What? This thing must weigh at least 50 pounds. EDS 34G11 going out on Y band, Mitch. Do you read me? Hey, you've really screwed us, buddy. Mitch. Can I remove the heat exchanger? What? The climate control. Just tell me. John, why didn't you just boot the girl? Why do you think? Martin, you got it. Mitch, look. I don't have the structural schematics on my box. I need you to look them up for me. No, I'm not going to do it. If I access the files, it'll show up on the computer log. You know that. They'll accuse me of breaking orders. But you're the one who wanted to buck the system a little revolution, remember? Here's your chance. What you're asking me to do is not revolution. You are asking for mutiny. It's not mutiny. As long as I complete my drop, it's a minor infraction. Minor. Do you have any idea what's been going on up here? The captain gave you a direct... Mitch, I'm in a real bind here. Please, just look up the specs. I do not have to. You cannot remove it. Why? How do you know that? Well, Lieutenant, I know because I watched them repair it, and they do it on the ship. If they could take it out, I would have seen it. But you don't know. John, listen to me. You are out of time. Do you hear me, Lieutenant? We are out of time. You have to boot the girl. I'll decide when I'm going to do it. That's insubordination? Yes. Fine. Then you know what you are, Johnny? You're a dumb bastard. And when they come asking about this, I'm not going to help you. Do you hear me? I'm not going to help you. I'm sure you won't. Uh. Uh. Okay. Oh, I could really use a pliers. Yeah, well, if we had any, we'd pull them out. Uh. Oh. I think I can get it to... Oh. Why don't you try turning it? Shut up. Well, maybe it'll unscrew. <laughs> broken now. Hey, John. Hmm? If this comes out, I can stay, can I? All the way to the bottom. I could see Adrian. I, I wouldn't have to worry about the radio. You could kiss him on the cheek. <laughs> John, if you get this out, I will do anything. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll, I'll, I'll give you all my money. I'll introduce you to a girl. Who says I need one? John, if anyone ever needed a girlfriend, it's you. You don't know that. I can't get it out. It's permanent. It's not coming out of there. Are you, uh... uh are you sure? It's not going anywhere. And there's nothing else? No. I'm sorry. How long can I wait for Adrian? Okay. Hold still, hold still. I gotta stop the bleeding. Just hold still. Get the first aid kit. We threw it out. Oh god. Okay. okay. Hold still. It's all right, it's all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. All right. All right. Just lie there. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. else. 
I felt like if I didn't do something, I would just... I know. I know. It's like that, people. They move out of the cities, and the cities keep right on chasing them down. I learned to conform to everything around me. So what do you want? I thought maybe I'd find out out here. <laughs> I guess you can't get away from what you carry around with you. Are you trying to get away from yourself? All I know is, until today, I still couldn't see much of a difference between myself and anyone else. I'm not trying. I mean, I, I, I don't want anything. I believe you. Do I get a last request? You had about a dozen. <laughs> What are you looking for? Remember when we talked to LC-10? We told them we were going to be late? Yeah. They didn't care. They said, be late. Delay if we had to. Yeah, but we can't... Listen. Think. If it were an emergency, people were going to die. Then we couldn't be late. Stand back. No, the medicine's fine. I ruined my career, but the medicine's fine. What are you trying to find? Information. Liars. What? What? It's not medicine? It's not medicine. Not for an emergency. It's a vaccine. It's to inoculate the miners. Well, that, that's medicine. They're not sick yet. It's a fungus in the mines. They, they, they've found the fungus, obviously, but they haven't exposed anyone yet. With this stuff, they can, they can keep working. They don't lose any production time. So they're not going to die? Not if they don't go in the mines. Well, 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 let's get it the hell out of here. Can you pull? I am pulling. <laughs> inoculate them. You said they're not sick yet. They don't go in, they don't get sick. No, they will go in. They will. They'll make them. You know what it's like. They don't have to. They will make them. What, you think the corporation's gonna wait? Hmm? You think they're gonna strike? They're alive. They don't have to die. If we do this, you know if we do this, people will die. I don't know that. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Why to say that? Oh, I must have punched it in wrong.
John. Don't worry. It can't be right. The medicine weighed more than enough. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I'll reconfigure. There has to be some old data stuck in here somewhere. It keeps saying me. I know. It's wrong. Well, why does it keep saying that? I don't know. We had too much weight, now we don't. We're lighter than we should be. Right, then it shouldn't be saying that. It doesn't matter what it says. We can land. I mean, it's not a... Geometrical equation. What does that mean? It means we've waited too long. Our math is two hours old. We, we, we didn't recheck it. We, we needed to run another simulation. D did you make a mistake? No, not then I didn't. So how, how is it different now? When I figured out how much we had to lose, that was for then. If we had lost that, then we'd have been OK. What, what, what difference does it make? We've been burning fuel this whole time, but with your extra weight, we haven't been slowing down as much as we should. The longer we waited, the more fuel we needed to burn, and so as time passed... No, that's wrong. We have more than two hours. We have more than two hours, and we'll be on the ground by then, because every 40 pounds is an hour. That was hours ago. If we lost 40 pounds now, it might give us 10 minutes. John, please, please, I don't... I don't understand what you're saying. If a car begins rolling downhill, you can stop it with one finger if you do it soon enough. But if it gets going, builds momentum, it'll run you over. You need more and more force to stop it. For us, that force is fuel. And to have enough fuel, we still need to be lighter. By how much? 80 pounds. Soon, it'll be 100 and more. We're back to where we started. John, I need to talk to Adrian. Eastern Station, this is EDS 34G11. Do you read? This is Cross. Hi. Lee? Adrian? Where are you? I'm on the EDS. Are you okay? What are you doing on that ship? A Adrian, there's a problem. I can't stay. What do you mean? If I stay, the ship will crash. I don't have time to tell you this, okay? I, I, I stowed away. I, I wanted... You stowed away? What were you... I can't believe it. Adrian, we have to talk now, and we have to make it fast, okay? So can we just talk? Well, of course, sis. I need to tell you something. I want you to go on. I want you to go on and, and, and work hard and get married and be happy, okay? I can't believe it. What... No, we tried everything. We, we dumped the cargo, and, and John, he, he's the pilot. He dumped his cargo to try to save me. He's in really big trouble. Adrian, you don't ever go into the mines, do you? Sometimes. Don't, don't. There's no vaccine. Don't let anybody go in there. People will get sick if they go in the mines, so just believe me, OK? I don't believe you. I'm going to be OK. I don't want you to beat yourself up about this. I'll be fine. Let's let's not. Adrian, we're never gonna get another chance, okay? Are you seeing anyone? Yeah, a, a woman here. Is it serious? I don't know. I think it is. What are you talking about? How can you even? Adrian, it's serious, right? I don't know. What are you doing on that ship? 
I wasn't supposed to see you for another year. I, th I thought you were going to stop running away. I wasn't running away. Yes, you were. That's your game. You always pack up and jack. Yeah, well, not anymore. Not anymore, Adrian, because there is nowhere for me to go. Why have you done this? Because you left me, okay? And I miss you. Is that why you came? I just never figured out how to love anyone else, you know? You're gonna die because of me? No. No, Adrian, I do not want you to think of it like that. You hear me? I do not want you to remember me like this. Listen. I want you to listen to me, Adrian. Close your eyes. Just do it. I want you to go back. Go back, we're, we're in our first house. And you're sitting in that room with the big window. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. You look through the window and you see the tree on the sidewalk. And you see the painting on the wall and it's the man on the horse. And the sunlight is on your face. I feel it. And there's someone next to you, Adrian. Yeah. Who is it? It's you. Lee? They're coming up on night side. Adrian, can you hear me? Yes. Adrian, you have to say goodbye to me. You have to say goodbye to me now. We don't have any more time left. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> you know what? I, I think... I've been more afraid of uh, saying goodbye than anything else. How much time? Fifteen minutes. thinking maybe we missed something. We did. Then you know what? I'll go. You'll land the ship. Oh, sure. You can. It's easy. The computer does most of it. The computer? John, you don't even know how to work this stupid It's thing. not that difficult. There are eight routines, uh, 14 sub... No, 16 subroutines. Uh, the main thing is the initiation sequence. It's a basic signature code. It'll get you down to the subroutines. John! Then all you need is the navigation, the proximity sensors, and... John! Uh, listen, you have to learn this. We don't have much time. I am not gonna learn this! Do you hear yourself? And we'll both go. What? I'm going with you. Oh, really? We'll go together. John, I'm gonna die. Do you really think I want you to die, too? What I want... No. I don't care what you want. I'm telling you what I want. You're gonna live because I say so you don't get a choice. John, you have to live. We did something wrong, and you have to go down there and make it right. You have to tell them about the mines. Adrian didn't know. They haven't told the miners. You have to do something else for me. You have to tell people what happened up here. You have to tell them why nobody would help us. Maybe then it won't be for nothing. Promise me. Let's get this over with, huh? It's too cold in here. 
There's still time left. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go. No! Let me go! Think of all the people that are gonna I don't die! Care. I don't care! No! If you care about me, don't make this any harder. <laughs> in a field, on earth. I'm sitting under a tree and I can feel the grass on my feet and the sun on my face and it feels warm. And there's someone sitting next to me. And this was the last time you talked to your sister? Yes. The lieutenant landed an hour or so later. I was with the team that found the ship. We took him to the clinic for his injuries. That's where he was arrested. Did you talk with him when you brought him in? Yes. What was the nature of your conversation? We talked about Lee. You had no problem speaking to the man who was responsible for the death of your sister? John's not responsible for what happened. Not to Lee and not what happened later. He tried to warn people, but the company wouldn't let him. That's all, Mr. Cross. I can Cross. tell you who's responsible. You are all of you. Mr. Cross, not another word. Bring in Barton. You can step down. You've watched this hearing in its entirety from your holding cell? I have. Do you have any other facts to present? Facts which might shed new light on the events we've outlined to the board here this afternoon? No. Sounds to me like you all have it just about perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I won't bore you with the facts again. You heard what happened. I would just ask you to remember, as you consider Lieutenant Barton's sentence, that we are still dealing with the consequences of his actions on that day a year ago. We are still dealing with the families of the miners who chose to work. Twelve men have died because of what the lieutenant did. Many more are seriously ill, and the general strike that this incident touched off has cost much. This incident was the genesis of all the problems we've had this year. And Lieutenant Barton is to blame.
Does the accused wish to make a statement before hearing sentence? Yes, actually I do. I promised Lee I wouldn't let anyone die because of what we did. And men have died. I promised I would tell people what happened. That I would try to change things. And things remain unchanged. You can do what you like with me. I don't think I matter. But I don't think you'll be able to kill the idea of having killed her. John Barton, following the recommendation of the prosecution, you are to be sentenced as follows. All company stock shall be seized by the corporation. You are to be dishonorably discharged, and you will spend 15 years in the mines on the labor colony of EL-6. Corporal, you to take the lieutenant back to holding. You will take the lieutenant back to his cell or you'll be charged with contempt of these proceedings. It's all right. You come on over here and take me away. Thank you, sir. If you ever need anything, sir, you just let someone know.